What's up everyone? Colby Cheese here and it's time for another pro game commentary. This time I'm going to be joining a game. This is about 2200 ELO I believe based on the person I joined up uh, watching Long Lee and he's going to be playing. Now I'm not sure. This guy actually, I know this guy, Devil Z Blade. I used to play some other game with him. What was it? Uh, that Diablo free to play game clone. Looks like we're going to have a little early gank here, so I, I'll talk about that later. But looks like Shaco on the team, not banned out, so doing a little bit of damage. He actually took his E as his first ability. Usually you'll see a Fizz taking his W as the first ability, but that actually worked out. Wow, and a kill onto the bottom lane. Let's jump back just a sec and take a look at that. I was taking control of the camera, so did not see that happening, but as they are level one they are going to go ahead and get aggressive even with a soraka here that's a nice little wow look at that engage she actually got a crit off used her w and grabs a double kill well that's not a double kill the soraka actually got the kill there but that's a really good start to the lane there what a nice engage you would not expect that against an ash and a soraka lane especially at level one so pretty good job there overall Fizz now level two here doesn't get shut down too hard by that gank from the Shaco, so he's gonna be good to go. This looks like it would be a fairly difficult lane, but looking at this here, we've got a nice little gank coming in here, and that is gonna take her down. The dash and the E is gonna be plenty of damage, including that red buff and the ignite. There's no way she was getting out of that one, so really good start overall for a blue team here in the beginning, and up here, let's take a look up top. We got Longley playing as a Malphite against the Yorick. That cannot be fun, as the Yorick is just an annoying champion to deal with, as almost anyone since he can sit there and you really can't hurt his health over a long period of time the only way to really kill him is just to burst him down so if you don't have a champion that can sit there and do some sustained bursty damage you're not going to be able to really just beat him out in the lane since he can use up his red wraith and just you know get all of his health right back without too much problem and here is a gank double buff on the shaco coming in long lead coming in to put down a ward or something like that or i don't know i guess he was just running around and now going to be in a pretty bad position is he going to be able to get a flash off of the wall actually uh throwing down an ignite or wait was that ignite i don't know i didn't see that but uh, yeah, it was an Ignite. Okay, so he did use the Ignite. I just, for some reason, didn't see the particles. Anyways, uh, Shaco going to be running away, and nothing happening to Long Lee, as he's just going to be taking those wolves as his jungler goes into the bottom area of the jungle. And bottom lane is getting shoved up quite sick here. It doesn't look... Oh, man, looks like uh, Santi here is about to get taken down. This bottom lane not having a lot of fun at all. And that is surprising. Normally, you'll have a Misfortune just completely wreck kids, but I don't know. Maybe it's just that... In terms of support viability here, the uh, the Soraka is just a better choice overall. Even with those changes that they made to Soraka, I mean her her armor debuff or uh, sorry armor buff lasts only what two seconds now instead of five, I believe. So some some definitely like a big change in those sustained fights. But her heal is still really strong, and that is not going to change. We'll have to keep taking a look at that. And the Shaco is going down there to be ganking here in a second. A little bit of action happening here, but nothing too big. I'm going to go ahead and take a peek back bottom and see if Shaco is able to make something happen. He's going to be right there over the bush, and that's going to be perfect engage time. This could be really bad for Ash. He does use her cleanse to get out of that as much as possible. Going to turn around and do a little bit of damage and poke. And this could be actually really good for bottom lane. Picking up a kill onto the support. Now Shaco is going to maybe, nope, will not die to the creeps. Looked like it was very close, but he's going to be diving in past her as a turret is not focusing him down. Uh, Ash, do you have your flash? No, no flash for Ash. <laughs> so uh, it's not going to work out here. And hopefully that Soraka, good job, Soraka. Go ahead. And, well, I guess he's not going to wait for the creeps. He could have easily stayed there and waited, but I guess he did not want to risk it. On the other hand, up here, top lane, it looks like both of them are doing just fine. Cool thing about Malphite, he does obviously have that shield, so he's going to be able to block a few... Uh, you know, a few points of damage from those raids, but overall, I think as you see Yorick going back and buying items for the first time, he's actually going to come way ahead of Longley, but we'll just have to wait and see. I could be wrong about that. Could have a nice gank coming in from the ribbon and see something really sick happen from that. Now, 4-0 and right now, as blue team is doing a really good job. They're already much higher up in gold so if they keep this advantage it's gonna be really hard for purple team but early on like this it's really anyone's game i mean it can come down to a dragon fight where they end up giving an ra like a quadra kill and then who knows 
At this point, though, looks like York is a little bit low on mana. He's probably going to be, yeah, as expected, he's going to be going back, kind of buy that. Um, now, I'm curious, I'll, most Yorks, they'll usually buy themselves a, uh, oh, is he going to get stopped? Oh, just before he got back, he actually was able to, uh, or he almost got hit right before he got back, but he's able to make it. Anyways, I was going to say, most Yorks will normally buy themselves the, uh, the Tear of the Goddess. I, I have been hearing a few... People who play Yorick kind of say, hey, man, that, maybe that's not the best build. Yeah, it has a little bit more damage, but they like to go for things a little bit tankier or possibly like a Trinity Force or something like that. So I, I don't know. This is just kind of the, the standard tried and true strategy. And there we go. There's another exhaust. Flash having to be used by Misfortune. They are just getting demolished on the bottom lane. What is the farm looking like? 25 to 35. Already 10 behind at 7 minutes. So we'll have to see if that holds or not. But right now, I think that uh, this Ash is just doing work on her. Here's a little bit of engage, and right now it may look like the York is going to be a little bit lower on health, but now that he's used his ultimate, he's going to be able to turn it around on Long Lee, no problem. And the problem here, in addition to that, is that Long Lee doesn't have that kind of easy sustain, whereas Thunder Dude, he's going to cast just a few abilities and be back to full health literally in no time. And it uh, doesn't seem like Lulu down here is really doing anything as a support that is useful for the team. Now, once she gets level 6, her ultimate is so, so very powerful. So that could potentially change, but it's going to be hard to say if that's really going to make a difference as opposed to having the Soraka's heals on the team and, you know, or maybe even as opposed to having a different support on their team to be able to help. And there's Arrow going to be going on to Misfortune and could be enough damage. Red Shadow's actually picking up the kill onto the enemy support and Shaco not able to clean up that Soraka at all. Now we'll be giving the kill to the Ash and this is looking really scary. She is going to take a turret hit but will take a double kill. Bottom lane just completely wrecking. If your bottom lane loses, it's going to be really hard for you to win the game, especially in that big of a case and here comes a nice game coming into the middle lane and looks like this fish will miss doesn't matter he dies before the actual fish came up anyways or i should say the shark the fish doesn't actually come up anywhere it's just the bait for the shark and that's going to give them a chance to go for that dragon this game is looking like it is over eight and oh already and they're now picking up the dragon they're above everyone in cs and this is just one of those games man like Everything went right for blue team, and you know, early on, big burst damage on bottom lane pretty much set them in the lead. Fizz had a great gank coming in from the Riven, and I mean, top lane may not be doing anything crazy, but Malphite, he didn't worry about it, he's just farming it up, and then he came down to middle, picked up a kill, and they grabbed that dragon, so making the best of a bad situation there which ultimately allowed them to win every single lane. And now they're going to be coming in with a five-man gank onto the bottom, picking up two more kills, completely shutting down bottom lane. This is just so embarrassing. It's the most terrifying thing. Like, nine minutes, you're ten kills behind. It's the worst feeling in the world. They're going to be taking out that bottom turret at only, like, less than ten minutes. They've taken a bottom turret, gotten two kills, and a dragon. That, my friends, is just... Uh, if that's not a complete shutdown, then I don't know what is. It's been a very long time since I've randomly casted a game that was this bad of a shutdown. And now look at Fizz. He's actually uh, in such a good position. He can completely run up to that Ari and take her down. And he actually didn't have a lot of mana, so he couldn't really uh, turn it around much there. But he does have his... Clum the water, chum the water, sorry. So if he waits just a little bit, there's the arrow from Ash, and there goes the chum. Boom, what a nice gank. There's no way she's getting away from that. And actually, still, uh, the kill was stolen by the support. Doesn't really matter at this point. This game is over as far as I'm concerned. They would have to have an act of God to finish this up. I almost feel like speeding it up just to like, finish this thing up. I'm, it's literally, I can't, I don't know the last time I've seen a game this, this like one-sided and a uh, you know high elo ranked match as normally people you know you, you don't see this amount of kills that much and so in any case they are doing a pretty good job here let's go ahead and speed it up just a little bit wait where's it at uh, boom let's speed this up to 2x maybe something will will happen who knows this is gonna be a really quick commentary it's gonna be you know out of like the 30 or so pro game commentaries that i've done that are random like this, this is this is literally the first one that has been this close. Like, I've had some that are they've been fairly close, but, you know, maybe back and forth, some cool plays and stuff like that. 
Oh, wait, wait. Ah, go back to normal. There's a fight. Ah. Hey, look, they got the first kill. Already picked it up. And uh, actually, I didn't even really get to watch that fight. Screw it. All right, let's go backwards. And Ari going to be doing some work here. She's actually about to die and was able to pick up a kill here. Where, where, where's her kill at? Oh, there it is. Had a little bit of ignite going on onto the Fizz, and that picked it up. And then, wow, look, man, look at what is Soraka's kill. She's actually got four kills. Soraka's 4-0-6 oh, right now. Soraka beast mode kill stealer right now. Even uh, even building up some armor items, going hardcore on these guys. Shelko getting away with just barely any HP at all. York comes in. He's a little bit tank. He's got his ultimate ready to go. And he says, go ahead, keep on diving me, but you're going to die for it. Longley still tanking the turret. And another kill for the Soraka. Carry Soraka incoming. Better look out. Is she going to get a double kill? Oh, my God. No. Nope. Not going to happen. And uh, I don't know why I said that. I was actually thinking that was uh, that Ash was the target of Soraka. But in any case, oh, she does grab a kill onto the Shaka. What was he thinking? I don't think they care anymore right now. So Soraka just being a beast right now. She is going to die, though. She has no health left. Will be shut down. No mana, no health. And that's going to be two kills for Ari. Wow, looky there. So in any case, let's speed this bad boy back up. I did pause it for just a little bit before I started the commentary. And Chum the Water's not going to happen. Looks like Riven comes in for a gank. Nothing special happened in there. Ult being used by Ari to keep herself alive. And so they're going to be doing their best to just defend here at their second turret on all the lanes, actually. It looks like top lane's actually not dead yet, but will be soon if they continue to push as a team, I imagine. Longley doing as much as he can to try and push that down. It's very close. And now they will be coming in onto the Shaco. He flashes away, or I guess blinks away. And now going to be going on to the support. Lulu in bad trouble, but gets away just barely. Not before she flashes though and takes her out. There's a double kill. Ash grabbing that one. Let's slow it down, even though the fight's already happened, I guess. And not enough damage. Ooh, the ignite will actually take her down. Will it be enough? No, she could have a little bit of life still, but here comes York. Cleans that fight up, no problem. He just continues to ult himself as he is probably the strongest one on the team right now. Devil Team Blade is not in trouble as he's got enough help from the team to clean that up. Golden Echo is going to be, or whatever, I don't, I don't know what that name is. What is that? Gold, Gold Chi, Gold Chi. Whatever. I thought it was Golden Echo when you look at it real closely. But anyways, he picks up the kill. Oh, look at that ultimate. It's going to stop everyone going back. Delzy Blade just barely gets away. Oh, that's got to suck. I'd be so sad if I was misfortune right now. I'd be like, I wanted the kill. Oh, this game. So sad. 18 and 4. Look at this. Gold advantage. They're almost 10k ahead at only 14 minutes. Most games, you'd still be in the early parts of the laning phase. But these guys are already ready to clean this up. I'm curious if they're going to surrender at 20 or if they're going to go... I would, you know what would be awesome in this game is if there was actually a, uh, if there was actually some kind of comeback, but I, I don't know if I'm, I'm seeing it. So let's go ahead and speed this bad boy back up and see what exactly happens. I imagine these guys so far ahead right now, they can technically, if they win a team fight, they can just push down for the win or something like that. I don't know. Well, they are pretty low, so it takes a little bit more time to clean up the turret. We'll see. Slowing it back down as they are going to be jumping onto this rock, but she is very strong right now. And holy crap, that damage! She's just destroying Chaco and she takes him down. Does finally die as there are four people there from Purple Team. You know when your support is doing a 1v4 and getting kills that you're in a bad position. That's all I got to say about that. Soraka actually has an Athene's Unholy Growl, so a little bit of AP helping her out at that point. That is, that is just wrong. That, there's, there's so many things wrong about that. Anyways. Let's speed this bad boy back up. By the way, guys, I uh, I want to do a lot more commentaries. Hopefully, I can do at least one a day, I think would be really fun. And that way, you guys just have a lot more content to check out from me, in addition to the other videos I do. You know, technically, it doesn't take me a lot of time to do these commentaries. I just never really get around to doing them before. But I was, I was just thinking about it. I was like, you know, all I got to do is just jump on one time a day, commentate a game, and toss it up for you guys. <laughs> And, uh, you know, it'd be good stuff. It's just like any other channel where they do daily content. You know, it's not like I'm trying to do a, uh, a Sean Plant Day 9 Daily type thing. But, you know, a little bit of a commentary here and there so you guys can check out some pro gamers play and get a little bit of insight on how that's going. I think that couldn't hurt at all. And there we go. Nice ultimate coming in. Long Lee going to be doing some damage onto Ari. Is she going to be able to survive this? I don't know for how long. Looks like Misfortune taking huge damage now. Red Shadow taking so... Well, look at this. The Soraka has more kills than anyone else on the team at this point. That is ridiculous. And now it looks like a flash over the wall. Ari does escape. So she is the lucky winner of that one there. Chicken dinner, whatever. And so Devil's B-Blade is going to be taking out this turret as much as 
as possible. Only one creep left, but it looks like a few more will be coming in. So I don't see how he's going to be able to defend this on his own. Ari is up, yes, but she's not very strong at this point. She's only got a Hextech revolver. Like I said, it's basically still landing phase. They don't have much going on for him. Devil's Blade is able to take out Thunder Dude. All he's got is his ultimate. I doubt that he's going to be able to finish him off, and that's going to be a... Pretty simple kill there. Now with Misfortune back up, it's going to be a little bit harder for them to shove down this turret. Especially with only a couple of them there. And Devil's Z Blade is a little low as well. But with with this uh, with this rug here, I don't know, man. She's beast mode at this point. She's just going to take everyone out. She does so much damage. Let's see, what are their levels? 11 to... Well, 11, yeah. I mean, bottom lane is the same as the middle. Plus, bottom lane is actually a lot lower for their team. All right. Lulu doing what she can, but it's just not enough. She's not able to 1v4 the enemy team. That is unfortunate for you guys. Oh, and there we go. There is the ultimate jumping in there on top of them. Big damage comes in, but not enough. Here comes a little bit of <laughs> a little bit of damage from Shaco. He just can't take out Delzy Blade. They are so underfed. They don't have what it takes. And this is pretty much just a, a final, like, hey, whatever. We're going to do what we can. See if we can grab at least one kill. They were able to take out the Ash. And I think this is going to be them pushing for victory. It's got to be. Look at that. They've got three people up. And Malphite's up top lane. Let's go ahead and speed this up until everyone comes back. They've already got down the inhibitor. And there are a few creeps coming in. If they can clean up these creeps and not lose to me. Oh, nope. There is, there is everyone. They're coming back. This is looking bad. So, all right. So, I'm not going to be able to clean that up. Obviously, it is very early. I forgot about that. So, the, the respawn timers are very low at this point. We're probably just gonna get a surrender here. At what the hell? Luckily, he missed his ultimate. So did Viz. That was two ultimate mixed. Might actually still get the kill. I don't know. She's got her ultimate and she's got her speed buff. So it's gonna be a little bit difficult to make that happen. Tanking a few turrets. Shots. He's got a little bit of armor, so it should be okay. Looks like he's gonna just jump out of there, no problem. But they did take that inhibitor. So as soon as these super creeps are going to get here, I think they should be good to go. It's going to be really hard for Purple Team to defend this. Like I said, I mean, these guys are so far behind. And right now it's past 20, so we could see a surrender at any point. I mean, if they get Ace one more time, I, I, I don't see them. Yeah, there it is. There is a surrender. Purple Team is goner. And like I said, one of the most one-sided games in a long time. But, you know, can't, uh, can't have them all be completely one-sided perfect. Or, I mean, completely back and forth perfect. Hopefully you guys at least somewhat enjoyed this silly commentary. And I'll see you around for the next one as well as my other styles of videos please subscribe if you would like to see more and hit that like button i'll see you around for the next one this is kobe cheese peace out